today. Anyway. Hi, Dan. It's Denise. We're here. And, and we're very much near the front of the parking lot. Should we drive all the way back or to the big building that says 147? Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> do you need help? No, I'm good. I'm going to do CrossFit. Oh. <laughs> assembly now for me is this part here and then we're going to make this on another blowpipe and then we put them together with clear glass over to make the base. Can I touch it? So Andy, Andy is the owner of this facility and also uh, Martha's Vineyard Glassworks and he's like the grand high exalted mystic ruler around here. Oh, he's been doing, he has that presence. Well, he's been doing glass blowing for 53 years. I've been doing stained glass for 53 years. Uh, and to be you know, the people who are in the system here, I mean, they, they are also excellent glass blowers. So he's training them up to the, even the next level. Um, it's really a team um, kind of effort. Um, DJ here is also sort of the, the best young designer uh, here. And he and Zach are working on the middle hole, and typically on uh, Wednesdays. And, uh, they make How do you determine the, the colors, the style? So what Andy just made is what we call a collar. He gathers the cut glass on the edge of his blow pipe, and then he blows the glass that was covering the, the whole part of the pipe. And uh, what uh, Emily was doing over at the uh, barber is he's gathering colors and he's creating what we call a mix. And so after he gathers this color, he's going to come over and feed it to Andy. And Andy is going to wrap it around and set it all. This is a little unusual to bring the pieces together that are, that are hot at the same time. So Emily is going to bring this bit over and Andy will wrap it onto the end of his pipe, onto the collar, and that's going to form um, what is the top of the base. We've got uh, the cane into sort of an open uh, piece and they'll stick that onto the onto what Andy makes here. So that black thing that you see sticking in there, that's a piece of cherry wood. Cherry wood has very little uh, resin in it, so we keep those wet and they won't burn. How long do you have before the glass starts cooling? And the shape you can't redo, the shape you have to remelt you have. It's not very long. You can see, you know, Andy move right back in here. So the idea is that you want to keep the heat in the glass the whole way. Because yes. if it gets really cold and then you have to reheat it, you may not be able to shape it exactly the way that you it's want like it. It's like old sugar in pastry. Exactly. Yes. Ah. So Andy is, is just shaping his coil a little bit. And we're blocking our, our view here. But he's shaping the, uh, the coil a little bit here yeah. to the same size as uh, Shannon has her uh, canes. And you can see there's a measure of 
down on the marker here that determines the exact size that they want things to be. So you, you see, you know, like every 30 seconds or so, you know, Andy will go in and add. White hot. Wow. Oh, look at that, a little you know, maneuvering. Well, it's, it's not white hot. It's, you know, it's a, it's a red hot. Glory holes operate at uh, 2150 degrees. So the glass in the furnace is also at 2150. Andy's going to form this all together. He'll form it back into a smaller bubble, and he'll then be able to gather more glass on top. Yes. So this, what he's rolling on here is called a marver. Um, these were originally made out of marble, and um, that's how you cool and shape it. There are these creases in it when he goes to gather more glass. Um, that will trap bubbles, but he doesn't want the bubbles uh, trapped in When you saw, saw him swing before and then here, yes, he was holding yes, up. Yes. They do use gravity. Um, as a matter of fact, in the later process of making the space, he will swing things out. But will blow the bubble out, it will be kind of round, but then they swing it to elongate it. And you just use gravity. So that's about having enough heat in it so that the glass is still kind of soft. stays on center yeah. and the level of precision of keeping this on center, you know, that really shows the end of yeah. experience. That smooth movement. Yeah. Yep. And the pressure I, I imagine, right? Yep. So you'll have every blow into this a little bit more. And depending on what you're making, whether you're making a base, a bowl, or whatever, the shape of the bubble before you gather more clear glass on top is really critical. You can't start out making a bowl and have a certain shape and gather more glass and turn it into a base. It, just, yeah. it doesn't really work. Yeah. So they're letting this cool off a little bit. That dark stuff you see on there, that's just a little of the block burning. When they go in here, that burns right off. And so, um, I think they're going to let this um, cool down a little bit. You have to let it cool down a little bit before you gather the hot glass. Otherwise, if your starter bubble is really hot, by the time you get back over to the bed, um, it, it will just be all rocky. So he's just reclining the shape of his bubble. You can see he's making it a little smaller. That's newspaper. There's many layers hold it up and it's just wet. And so, you know, back in Roman and medieval times, they would use bunches of wet hay to actually hold in their hands to shape it. How many of these are they going to do today, Dan? How many are you going to make today, Ten? Well, we did the, we pulled the cane this morning. Oh, I see. decoration. When we walk, we'll probably make six, seven. Six. When we walk back into my space, I'll show you what the cane uh, looks like. Uh, 
So these boxes that you see over against the wall, those yes. will be the kneeling of it. That's where we put that's the That's what the, we made this, we made, you know, this color we made it 20 feet long. Okay. And then we broke it into pieces, and then you saw us pick those up. Right, right. I was going to ask you where you could have these collars and stuff like that. You yeah. Yeah. Made yeah. yeah. It's white oh my gosh. This is white and green. Okay. And for the top of this, to go with the white and green, it's the right. white and tan. Now, Andy's oh, oh, pulling yeah. a bubble out of... Oh, yeah, I saw a bubble. Because sometimes there might be a bubble in the in the clear glass. You can see that, you know, by the time Henry got back over here, that that center bubble yeah. had um, uh, had already got warm. When Andy uses the block after the gather of glass, that's called equalizing the temperature. You to equalize the temperature on the outside uh, gather of glass with the inner part. Because if the inner part's too cool, when you blow, it's just not going to work. Right. So the, the right. temperature of everything that you see in there has to be correct. So with each step here, Andy will shape the bubble in a, in a certain way, even as... So you can feel how heavy that base was before, yes. but there's probably about 25% more glass on here than, than that. And you're holding it at the end of the six foot long. Oh, so it's about 10 pounds or so? I would say so. Yeah. Eight to ten. Yes. And that's, you know, when you're holding it at the end. Yeah, the yeah. Six yeah. Are brutal. So now he's using gravity to yeah. stretch. Yep. Now most beginner glass blowers, they are work, trying to work it until it becomes completely cool and it's not moving on the pipe. Yeah, but you can a much higher level of temperature. Because if it gets too cool, then it will get into the That would take too long. But the other thing is that equalizing of temperature, not just the outer skin of glass, yeah. but the inner. Yeah. Uh, you can see that the that the bottom of the base is much hotter than the top. Yeah. Now what Andy's putting in there is called the jack line. That's a constriction where that's where they'll be able to break the base off. Now the other thing that he's that he's dealing with here is all these different colors melt at different temperatures. So when when you have all the temperatures the same, some colors might blow out really fast, others not so fast. So that's the other thing that he's trying to uh, control here. When Henry goes back into the glory hall, the the part that's furthest out is the coolest part. And you can see the burners in there are all okay. very deep. So you can see he's just eating the bottom of, of the bubble now. So that's also part of the of the control of the process. It's where you want the heat to be. You want it to be hot all the way back up by the jack line, or just through the middle of the piece. And so um, he has most of his the first third down from the bottom. And again, he's getting a little bit more like that. Just the end, right. because even when they flatten, 
Now he has a, a little cork flattener here. Um, we actually cut up yoga blocks. Oh, of that sounds great. Um, distort the shape of the face up to sides. Right. Ooh. Wow. Oh. mushes and becomes part of the vase because when you break off scissors made for glass blowing and cut a lip of that hot glass off uh, so that it will be just perfectly even. Now remember the bottom of the base was always the first part into the glory hall and back so the coolest part of it by the time they did the break off was up near the pipe so that's why he's doing such a long flash here. It takes a while to get enough temperature. You're always working from the pipe out. You know, you start all your glasses right back by the pipe, you add in more glass, yeah. and then you get your bottom completely done, and then you don't want to be reheating the bottom. Right, right. <laughs> And you can see that top part of the of the base is all now melted. When it broke off, it was all sharp. But that big heat, it's all kind of melted. Now, Andy might shake the top of the base with the paper again. Um, that pair of tongs that he was using, those are called the jacks. That's your primary. That's your primary. The base. <laughs> 